Okay, let's uh, pick it up from where we left off. So, um, I think we are 126. True or false? If that, then that. Okay, squeeze theorem time, it looks like. Now, why have we got a T beside it? Are we expected to use technology to judge it? So is that the idea? Because there's a T beside it. And we could make graphs as well. Um, okay, I don't think strict, do I need it? I think, they, I think the idea is to use a calculator. Okay, okay, let's let's get started on this one then. Um, perhaps a spreadsheet tool would be most suitable for this. Um, yeah. I think that's what we'll do. A spreadsheet tool. Okay, that's it. Copy more of the questions over. So then there's one left at the end. Okay, one thirty. Put that in. No, I'll put it up here. All right, now let's get started. We'll open up a new sheet. Okay, so squeeze theorem. Um, let's see, we'll do the that one, 2x minus 1, then x squared minus 2x plus, plus 3, and then uh, the limit as x goes to 2, so we'll say, we'll just go from the right, because it's defined at 2, there's no problems, uh, 2 point it's continuous at two, isn't that the word I should say? 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. Okay, so this equals two times that minus one. This equals that squared minus two times that plus three. And then, um, yeah, we're getting squeezed in between. It looks like the limit is uh oh that's false it's not zero um it's um three two or false if that then the limit as x goes to two is zero no that, that's a false okay for the following problems, evaluate the limit using the squeeze term. Use a calculator to graph the function f, g, and h when possible. Ah, oh, we want graphs. Um, but where is our, there? There's our f, g, and h. There's our f. But where's the, that, that's the g. Hmm. For the following problems, evaluate the limit using the squeeze term. Use a calculator to graph the functions f, g, and h where possible. I suspect. Are they talking about like if this is f and this is h and this is g? Do they mean to graph the lower and the upper? Is that what they're looking to do? Very unclear question um 
That's kind of weird. Um, and they don't tell us what F and H are, so we're supposed to, hmm. I think this is poorly written. Let's have a look at the example to see what they're imagining is being done here. So that's the squeeze term there, but um, yeah, that's that's what they mean when they're saying F and H. Okay, but we'll have to judge two fun judge and decide on two functions F and H. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have to make a graph. Okay, so maybe Excel is not the best for. 127 onwards. Okay. Right, well, we got 126 done. Let's have a look at 127 onwards. We might need to make a bit more space here. Okay, what functions could we have here? We could have f theta, so we need a function that's a little bit under it. Um, oh yeah, we could go with minus theta squared perhaps, and h theta equal to positive theta squared. And this function here, if we call this g, G will definitely be in between the two. So we can graph that. We'll use our, we'll get rid of this and we'll use our Maxima software. Okay. Oops. Let's get the answer ready, but that's not peak yet. Okay, now um, we'll just call it x squared and then minus x squared. And then we want to plot this. Um, from zero, so we'll go from minus one to one, and then we want to plot this. And then we want to plot this one from minus one to one as well. So you've got your two plots here. And at zero, this is getting pushed to zero, it's decreasing to zero. And at zero, it's increasing to zero, so it's, it's getting squished to zero. So we can clearly see uh, the limit is zero. And I expect that B is the answer at the back. And um, looks like, yeah, they went with two quadratics as well. Oh, and they wanted the plot they want the plot as well. Oh, they did, didn't they? They said F, G, and H. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do, actually? I'll just use my derive software because that's a little bit easier for me to use with the um, plots because then I can plot all three on the same graph quickly and easily. Okay, so we had x squared minus x squared, and then x squared cos 1 over x. So plot plot and plot. Yeah, okay, good. 
128. Um, so Unfortunately, they call that F, which is really annoying because they really should call it G if they're going to be consistent with their naming. So that is something I would recommend them to change. But I don't know. I, I put in a couple of tickets of changes and only one of them got uh, feedback. Um, so I, I would have called that G. Um, so maybe I'll use capital letters. So F of X. The lower one will go with is zero. Um, G of X is what is F of X here. And then H of X. Um, I want to go with something that's a little bit bigger than X squared. Um, X actually. When X is near zero, I think that would do it. Let's let's plot it and see. So we've got zero, x squared, and x. So let's plot the zero. Obviously, that's just a horizontal line. And then the x squared. That's a straight line there. And then, oh, sorry, the x I meant, and now the x squared. So if I zoom in, um, you can see that this is squished between the blue which is the upper x, and the red, which is the lower. Oh, but it's not squished on the left. So actually, what I'll do instead, I'll change this to absolute of x. Oh, it's just, it's called abs, not fabs. Okay, now I'll plot it. So that, that, There we go. And then, did I miss that one? There we go. Uh, well, strictly speaking, the function is this. So it's actually, I can't really plot it because it's it's jumping between zero and x squared. It's not going to work on this software. So this black line, and there's actually a, another line. It might actually be easier for me to sketch it. So the f, here is this red line, and then the H, which we're making as absolute of X, that would be this green line here. And then what's happening is, um, this is, it looks continuous, but it's, it's jumping up and down. It kind of looks like this. As it hits irrational, irrational, etc. It jumps up to x squared and down to zero, but it's still squished between the two, which is the point. Okay, 129. In physics, the magnitude of an electric field generated by point charge this and or in a vacuum is governed by Coulomb's law, where E represents the magnitude of the electric field, Q is the charge, or is the distance, and that is a constant. Using a graph and calculate graph E, given that the charge particle is Q minus 10. Okay, so let's, uh, let's graph this now. Okay, so E or is defined as Q, which is 10 power minus 10 over 4 uh, or squared. Then there's a constant in the front, uh, which is 8 point, 8 point, 8 point. 988 times 10 power 9. And uh, we want to graph that. There we go. It uh, shoots to infinity at zero. Um oh, okay, so that's done. Evaluate that. What does the physical mean? So that's infinity, and uh it means there's infinite um mag uh, infinite magnitude 
of the electric field strength E at the origin of the source. But it can't really be at the origin or it can't really be zero anyway, so it doesn't quite make sense. What did they say for the answer? Uh, becomes infinite, it does not make physical sense to evaluate negative distance. That's true too. Um, that's true too. So actually, I guess on the graph, I should really perhaps not have the left side. So how can I uh, cut that out? Just, uh, oops, yeah. Oops. There we go, that'll do. Uh, okay, that's good. Um, why are you, I missed that at the end, why are you evaluating from the, the right? Because R has to be greater than zero. It's a distance. Okay. And lastly, 130. The density of an object is given by its mass divided by its, its volume. Use a calculator to plot the volume as a function of density. Assuming your exam is of mass eight. So the volume as a function of density would be 8 over m. Okay. Right, let's do that. Where's rho? Oh, sorry, m. Now the, the density is mass over volume. Uh, use a calculator to plot the volume as a function of density. Volume is mass over density. Volume is mass over density, and the mass is eight. So, sorry, that is rho. And that is rho, that is eight. Okay, and then we want to plot B rho or X matter here for the plot. Okay, that's what it looks like. There we go. Okay. Um, use a calculator to plot the volume as a function of density. Oh, sorry, I wrote that. Oh wait, density. Um, there's the there's the plot. Okay. Uh, evaluate the limit and explain the physical meaning again. Density has to be positive. I guess it could equal zero, although you don't really want to be divided by zero. And um, what's the meaning as density approaches zero? So it shoots to infinity. So it means that for eight kilogram mass, as density tends to zero, the volume will need to tend to infinity. Okay. So yeah, I think that's everything finished now with this exercise. And what's coming up next? Continuity. Yeah, we'd classify the discontinuity first. Okay, and then we're, we're coming to the end of chapter two, which is nice. Okay, so I think that's a good place to wrap it up for today. We'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. And if you spot any mistakes, please do let me know.